Well, Pranant, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us in the Welsh Government again today. Uh, at the start of a new working week, I just wanted to reflect on the enormous challenges which coronavirus has posed to every one of us here in Wales. Uh, in a space of a very few weeks, uh, the lives of all Welsh citizens have changed dramatically. Schools and businesses have closed. Most of us are working at home or staying at home. And outside, our roads, our streets, our parks are quiet in a way that we would never normally expect or recognise. And I want to begin by thanking everyone here in Wales for the help and patience that people have shown as we have all had to get used to the new strict rules that have been introduced and all of which are designed to slow the spread of the virus and in that way to save lives. These are rules that will help to protect our NHS so that it is there when it is most needed and will mean that more people at the end of this will be alive than otherwise would have been. And across Wales, the response of Welsh citizens has been amazing. Uh, enormous numbers of people coming forward to offer help in getting us through the difficult days ahead. Uh, and as well as thanking them, I want, of course, to thank all of those who work in our health and social care services for the hard work which they do in what are very challenging and difficult circumstances. We ask a lot of those people who work in that part of the public service, and we know that we will be asking even more of them in the days and weeks ahead. Just gair o ddiolchi, bob un o honno chi, sy'n gweithio yn y gwasanaeth iechyd, yn gofal yn y gymuned, am popeth chi'n wedi wneud yn barod ac am popeth sydd i ddod. Diolch o galon i chi gyd. Now, the pace at which the coronavirus pandemic is affecting our economy is extraordinary. And now, more than ever, government needs to do everything we can to support businesses here in Wales. That is why, throughout last week, my Cabinet colleagues and I worked to reprioritise the Welsh Government's budget. And we've done that to free up as much funding as possible to ensure that Welsh public services and Welsh businesses have all the support that we can offer them. And the result of that reprioritisation exercise is that we have a £1.1 billion fighting fund to respond to those specific Welsh needs. And today I'm able to announce that we have created a £500 million economy crisis fund to provide extra support for businesses, charities and social enterprises in Wales. This fund will help businesses to survive the coronavirus challenge so that they are ready, when we come out the other side of this, to go on providing jobs and futures here in Wales. And this help is over and above the support schemes already announced by the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The fund will help those firms who are having to go into hibernation or those firms which need cash flow support to adapt to new ways of working during the pandemic. There are two main elements to the fund. First of all, the Development Bank for Wales will have an injection of £100 million, and that will be available to companies experiencing cash flow problems as a result of the pandemic. It will provide loans of between £5,000 and £250,000 at a minimal level of interest. Now, that fund is already up uh, and working through the Development Bank uh, for Wales and will be taking applications during this week. Then there is a £400 million emergency pot. That will provide £10,000 in grants for micro-businesses, 
uh, with up to nine employees. These are businesses which weren't eligible for the business grants we announced on March the 18th, and this will be new money available to that sector of the Welsh economy. Then that £400 million will support grants of up to £100,000 for small and medium-sized firms with between 10 and, and 250 employees. And thirdly, there will be support from that fund for larger Welsh headquartered companies which are of critical social or economic importance to Wales. It is a criteria-led fund. Businesses will have to apply for it. They will have to meet the criteria and support through those three other elements of the fund will come on stream during uh, April. Now, we made a commitment that we would fill gaps and support business through this incredibly difficult time. And this package helps us to do just that, to help viable businesses with a successful future in front of them, to weather the storm of coronavirus and to be there to create livelihoods and futures for people in Wales, the other side of coronavirus. Uh, Diolch and happy to take some questions, of course. Uh, Felicity, I'll go to you first. Well, thank you. Um, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer in England suggested yesterday that the restrictions that we're facing at the moment could last up to six months. Do you agree with that assessment of the people who are answering in England? Of course. Uh, well, uh, firstly, he's asking me about the length of time the restrictions may have to be imposed following the remarks yesterday of the Deputy Chief Medical Officer in England. Look, I think there's no doubt at all that we are facing restrictions beyond the three weeks of the immediate period that the, um, the announcement that we made on Monday of last week. Uh, I think there will be a gradual reduction in those restrictions over the period of time if what we've done already allows us to lower the peak of the current outbreak. Uh, we may need significant restrictions for longer than the original three weeks, and beyond that period there will be time when we don't just go from everything being restricted to nothing being restricted. And that's going to be a long haul and a difficult haul for individuals and businesses. So doing gallu weld, mae'r cyfnod o tair wrthno sy'n dani ar hyn o bryd, dwi'n gallu weld ar achos i wneud fwy na hynny, a, a cadw gyda'r cyfuniadau a, fawr ar ôl y tair wrthnos, dros y misoedd a, i ddod, dwi'n gallu weld, bydd rhaid i ni wneud a, fwy. Ond os ni'n llwyddo i cael yr effaith ar coronavirus ni'n eisiau weld, ni'n gallu dros y cyfnod i leihau a pethau sy'n dani ar hyn o bryd. So just being asked about the way in which deaths in Wales are being announced, we currently announce them on an all Wales basis. And will we get to a point where we may be able to announce them on a more geographically refined basis? Uh, I think the answer will lie in the numbers. Because the numbers in Wales are still relatively low, if you share them out between all seven health boards, it becomes relatively possible to identify those individuals by name and circumstance. And the reason we're not doing that is in order to protect the privacy of those individuals and their families. Uh, if we do get to a point where the number of deaths that we are announcing moves beyond the point where at a local uh, health board level it would be possible to do that, we will revisit uh, the way in which we are announcing things. But because the numbers are where they currently are, 
we're not announcing them at a disaggregated level in Wales in order to protect the privacy of individuals and families at such a difficult time. Nick. Uh, well, of course, we are disappointed when being asked about the fact that tests that we had contracted with a particular firm to provide for Wales are now not going to be provided by that firm as we had expected. And that is a matter of disappointment to us because we believed we had an agreement that should have been honoured. Will it make a difference, a significant difference, to the number of tests we're able to provide? Uh, we think not, because we are able to draw on a wider consortium than a single uh, firm, and the number of tests we were going to get through that firm, we will be able to make good through the wider consortium. Uh, so we have plans to extend the number of tests here in Wales, ramping it up over the next few weeks we will get to the figure that we originally uh, anticipated, not in the way that we had expected and not in the way we feel we were entitled uh, to have honoured. So we are indeed testing uh, staff in the Welsh NHS, have been since the 18th uh, of March. Over a 1,000 tests of NHS, NHS staff in Wales have now been carried uh, out. Many of those people are then released back uh, to the front line because that was the point of concentrating on those staff, is that we didn't want people self-isolating. Uh, in circumstances where they weren't affected by uh, the disease. Uh, I'm not aware that we published figures that break down the 1,000 into people who had and didn't have the virus, but what I am confident about is that that approach has succeeded in doing what we wanted it to do, to make sure that people who don't have coronavirus aren't staying at home unnecessarily by testing those people. They're back in the front line and doing the vital work we need them to do. Dan. Uh, thank you. So I'm being asked about the new antibody test, which my colleague Vaughan Gethin uh, announced over the weekend, the fact that we will be using that test in Wales as soon as uh, it has finally been validated by the uh, regime that is there to do that for use. Uh, it's a blood test, as you know, and it will let people know whether they have already had the disease and whether they have immunity uh, to uh, future attacks of it. Our intention is to introduce the antibody test in the same way as we have introduced the existing antigen test. In other words, as supplies of that new test become available, the first call for it will be frontline NHS staff, because again, we want to make sure that as many of those uh, are able to carry on uh, in work as possible. We will then extend it uh, inside the NHS and out to social care workers, providing uh, help for people in their own homes or in residential care. And then we will move uh, on to other groups beyond that, including when uh, the volume of testing is sufficient to members of the public. But it's important for us to use that new capacity in a way that shores up our general approach, which is to make sure that we are protecting our NHS. We have as many people there safe and able uh, to work, because that is the way that we will save lives. So, Benny Nade, a we did not hear a plough now with Mounir in fault, we did not hear a plough to Danny Ahin O'Breed. We did not hear a plough Gadda Bobot in Gwithio and the Gwasanaeth Yechid I Dachre. I mind our all Hani Bobot in Gwithio Mounir Goval and Gmined. I got all Hani I Amestin a testi Bobol Eirail. Ni Nade will. Hin, achos ni'n isie defnyddio'r y prawf yn yr unig ffordd ni defnyddio'r un sy'n dani â hyn o bryd i warchod ar NHS, 
uh, i helpu bobl sy'n gweithio yn yr NHS i wneud y gweith pwysig uh, mae'n nŵn wneud, a trwy uh, hynny uh, i uh, achub i bywydau. Well, our aim is to ramp up testing of both sorts. Uh, where we will get to over the months ahead, I think, is difficult to predict, and our efforts are focused on the here and now, what we can achieve uh, this week, uh, what we can achieve over the month of April. Uh, by the time we get to the end of the month of April, we will be in a different state of knowledge about the way in which the disease is progressing in Wales and the most effective ways in which we can then use the sorts of tests that will be available. We're driven, as are governments across the United Kingdom, by the science, by the advice that we get from the chief medical uh, officers. That's why we will be deploying the tests we will have available in April in the way we have. If we get advice from them beyond that, that we can use the test in a different uh, way, then of course we will follow their advice there as well. Claire. First Minister, can I ask, are there any present concerns about the spread of coronavirus, particularly in the Anar and Bevan area of Wales? So there are hot spots in the disease in all parts of the United Kingdom, uh, and we do have a hot spot uh, in Gwent. Uh, explaining it uh, isn't straightforward, uh, and there is, to an extent, some degree of randomness about the way in which these hotspots uh, emerge. Parts of the reasons why we think there may be um, an issue in Gwent are, first of all, it had a very early case of a member of health board staff uh, acquiring the virus, and therefore testing in Gwent was carried out more vigorously and more widely and, more, and earlier than in other parts of Wales, and we may simply be partly picking up the result of that. It looks like there's more there because we've tested more people there than elsewhere. There is evidence that the disease is moving east to west across the United Kingdom, and Newport is right at the eastern end uh, of Wales. So you would expect, if that were the case, that the biggest impact of coronavirus would be felt, first of all, in the Iron Health Board because it's closest to our border. Uh, and then there is finally something to do with our population uh, density. So the more people there are in, a, in an area, the faster the disease circulates, as we see uh, in London and in the, the Welsh population, as you know, is along our border. Uh, and that's true of the Iron Bevan Health Board. And so those factors all together may be part of the explanation why we have the position uh, in Grant, but chance is playing its part in that as well. And First Minister, can I also ask, to what extent do healthcare workers make up the positive tests in that area? Uh, so it's a question about health workers in the Grant uh, area, and at the beginning it is true that there was, as I said, a health worker who contracted the uh, virus. It led to um, a group of people in the health service, in the United and Bevan Health Board, uh, getting the virus uh, as well. Um, that's part of the story of the Gwent uh, outbreak, but by no means now all of it. So I'm being asked some questions uh, electronically by colleagues. Media Wales are uh, asking about the £1.1 billion that I announced earlier today and is asking where it's come from. Uh, well, all colleagues in the Cabinet have had to reprioritise their budgets. To give you just a couple of examples, we had money in our budget uh, in the post-Brexit context to support Welsh businesses to go on trade missions to other parts of the world to make sure that our economy uh, could survive and thrive in a Brexit context. Those things aren't happening. Some of that money has been uh, released back to the centre. We're reprioritising European funding here uh, in Wales. There were plans to use European funding during 2020 that now can't go ahead because of the coronavirus uh, position. We're repurposing uh, that money. That's making a contribution to the 1.1 billion. But all Cabinet colleagues 
uh, have made a contribution, and we've built that fund up by taking money out of things that were originally planned, augmenting it by some money coming from the UK uh, government, and that's how we get to the 1.1 uh, billion. Uh, questions then, uh, which I think I've answered about the Iron Bevan position, questions about community uh, testing, and as I've said, uh, we are testing uh, around just over a, a thousand tests uh, a day uh, in Wales. We'll be ramping uh, that up to m many more thousands during uh, April, and that will help us to uh, tra keep track of community spread here uh, in Wales. Uh, a question from uh, Steve Morris from uh, The Guardian, uh, asking whether Wales is getting enough support, financial or otherwise, from the UK government compared to the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, well, let me begin by saying that we are working very closely with the governments right across the UK. I regard this as absolutely something where the more closely we can work together, more, the more effective we will all be. Uh, and I want to recognize the money that has come uh, to Wales through decisions that the Chancellor of the Exchequer has made. We make the point to the UK government. The money we get at the moment comes to us because of our population share. We get money depending on how many people there are in Wales. What we say we should get is money that reflects the needs of Wales. We have an older, sicker population. Our history of coal mining and heavy industry means that we have people with uh, breathing problems uh, that the coronavirus is particularly likely to affect. Money should come to Wales based on our need, not simply our population share. That's a conversation we go on having with the UK government. But in general, I want to emphasize the close working that goes on between Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the UK government, because that's the best way to make the difference. Question here from uh, Rob Taylor from uh, Wrexham.com, uh, asking about the plans to ensure that local authorities are able to deal with the costs that they are incurring through their local responses. We've uh, created a £30 million fund that we've already announced for local authorities, helping them, for example, to deal with a homelessness population uh, in Wales who are particularly exposed to coronavirus. We announced £7 million to make sure that local authorities could continue to meet the need for free school meals uh, here in Wales. We have very strong uh, daily contact with the Welsh Local Government Association and are determined to go on using part of that fund, the £1.1 billion that we've collected uh, last week, to recognise the, uh, the extra challenges that local authorities uh, face. Uh, a question uh, here from the South Wales uh, Argus asking about support to help charities uh, pay wages. Uh, that, of course, has already been uh, offered through the UK government's uh, schemes, but asking about support for charities because they've had to cancel major fundraising events. And again, over the weekend, we were able to uh, announce a major investment in the third sector here uh, in Wales, recognising the fantastic job that charities and other third sector organisations are doing in channelling the enormous upswell of volunteering we've seen across Wales to make sure the people who are being sheltered in their own homes get the help uh, that they need. Uh, we will work very closely with the sector here in Wales to try to make sure that those organisations that have such an important part to play in the crisis and beyond the crisis as well are able to do everything they want to do to help and have a future beyond it. It's time, I think, for maybe one or two further and final questions. Felicity, I'll go back to you. Thank you. Uh, we, we thought we could expect further guidance on building I 
Well, I want to repeat the, in answer to that question the guidance that is there for all companies. Uh, if you cannot operate in a way that preserves the health of your employees through a social uh, distancing, a two-meter uh, gap, then it is your responsibility uh, as a company to take action. And we know that many companies in Wales, including construction uh, companies, have decided not to continue operating in the current uh, set of circumstances because they couldn't uh, satisfy themselves that they could operate in a way that safeguarded the welfare and well-being of their employees. Uh, that is a position that all firms in Wales, whether in construction or in manufacturing or anywhere else, uh, needs to take. If you're not able to operate safely, you ought not to be operating. Nick. Look, the, the trend is still going up. The trend is going up right across the whole of the United Kingdom and right across society. Uh, as we've seen in the last few days, the coronavirus is no respecter of persons in any position. Uh, and the numbers are going to continue to rise. I've you know, just got to echo what the Prime Minister said over the weekend. Uh, the story of the next couple of weeks is going to be rising numbers of people infected, rising numbers of people very badly uh, affected as the measures that we have announced already make that impact and begin to slow down the pace of the virus. That is why it is so important that people observe all the things that we are asking of them, hard as they are, challenging as they are, the things that people are doing to stay in their own homes, to avoid contact with other people, to make sure that social distancing and basic public health hygiene measures are taking. That is what will make the difference here. It will be a couple of weeks before we see the impact of them, and then we are hopeful, that's what the advice tells us, we will begin to see a slowdown in the disease and we will begin to come out the other side. Uh, Claire, finally. First Minister, can I ask about the progress with these so-called field hospitals in Wales and when they might start receiving their first patients? Uh, I'll be asked about field hospitals uh, in Wales. I uh, want to express my uh, gratitude to the armed forces here in Wales for their very ready cooperation. Lots of discussions with them uh, last week. Health boards, the Welsh Government and others are being assisted by the armed forces, particularly in logistics and in planning. Uh, we have people from the armed forces out today in the Principality Stadium here uh, in Wales, beginning the detailed planning that will be needed to use that uh, at the point when that extra capacity will be required. We know that that is happening in other parts uh, of Wales. There are numbers that are being worked on uh, by those planners in discussions with those local uh, health boards. Uh, and as they firm up, uh, and as we are uh, sure of, uh, the help that will be provided and the numbers that will be provided in, of course, will make that information available to people in Wales. Thank you all very much indeed.